and we're live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to MAE 209. This is Probability and Statistics. My name is Richard Kohar, and this is Lecture 9. And in today's lecture, we're going to be covering discrete random variables and probability distributions. Good afternoon to everyone in the chat, and hopefully you can hear me OK. I'll just say something in the chat. There we go. <clears throat> so without further ado, here we go. So in this chapter, what we'll be looking at in chapter 3 Perfect. That's good to hear that everyone can hear me good. So in chapter three, we'll be covering discrete random variables. And don't worry, we're going to discuss what those are in a second. Variables, random variables. <clears throat> and then in chapter four, we have the same discussion all over again, but we use continuous. So, remember that we have, we're working usually with some sort of sample space, and we have a bunch of outcomes. And what we would like to do is assign outcomes to numbers, let's say 3. And we'll assign these to the real number line. So I did 2 there. And let's say here's another one over here. Let's say that this is. 3.5, here's say 4, so what we're doing is, is out each outcome of an experiment can be assigned a real number. Let me say by some rule. Now that rule is what we call a random variable. So, now just as a little note, in the textbook, they use the abbreviation so RV to mean random variable. So that's something just to kind of keep in the back of your mind when you're reading the textbook. So random variable. <clears throat> So in the book, they give a 
specific definition of this. So the definition. So a random variable. Is a is a function x that takes basically what it's doing is it's just explaining basically the picture that we did just drawn up here. It's our intuition. It takes from the sample space, or it takes from the sample. Takes from the sample space S and maps it to to a set of real numbers. Now I just want to be a little bit specific about this. So again, this is for the random variable. Now when we use when it's uh, mapping it to a set of real numbers we'll say that this is continuous a continuous random variable and then i'll also write <clears throat> down here to a set of discrete numbers And discrete numbers usually are natural numbers, the whole numbers. So that's uh, these are the counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4. The whole numbers is the natural numbers with 0. We have the integers. So those are the negative, positive, and 0, as well as the rational numbers. Those are numbers that we can express as fractions. And what I'll do is I'll put this in blue. Oops, gotta make sure it hasn't finished drawing yet. And we'll see that these are discrete random variables. Just to color code this. So again, if it's mapping from the sample space to the real numbers, we call it continuous. And if it's mapping the sample points or the sample, taking sample points from the sample space and mapping it to the discrete numbers, then we say it's discrete. And that's what today's lecture is going to be focusing on is on discrete random variables. And a random variable is denoted usually with a capital letter like x, y, z, so on and so forth. So far, so good. So what we'll do is I'll give you the example that here is number two. So here's our example that we're going to use. Now our experiment is going to be, we're going to th throw two dice. Uh, I 
I'll say two fair, two fair dice. You know, not like these ones that give me either eleven or seven. So those are going to be fair dice, and they're going to have from one to six on each of them. So the outcomes, our sample space is going to be, I'm just going to draw out so we can have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Over here we'll have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we'll have one, 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 two, one, three, one, five, all the way up to one, six. And you know, as we go down the rows, it's kind of tedious but we know that there's going to be 36 outcomes. This is uh, what we had covered in lecture 4. And this is found on page 4 in the PDF. Dot, 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 all the way up to, and then we'll eventually get to 6 and 6. But when we're playing a game like craps, which is a dice game that you find at a casino, we're not so much interested in the explicit sample point like 2-3. No, what they're more concerned about is the sum of the dice. So over here, what I'll do is I'll create another table and trying to not cause any So I'll just put a plus up here, and we'll have our dice again. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Similarly, we'll just go down. We'll have one, two, oh, let's pick. And three, and six and so this table works by saying that one plus one gives me two so again the sum of the two dice here for this outcome is one and one so that gives me two one and two here gives me three one and three gives me four and so on and so forth so if I could look at the second row here this is now three four five six And we just keep working our way through. Okay. And this is what the random variable is. It's going to map from these sample outcomes, so this is kind of our sample space here, and it's mapping it to a number here. So I can say that going from here, this entire table into this one. This is what we call the random variable, and we'll call that x. And what x actually means then is we'll let x 
So again, it's a capital letter because it's a random variable. Let x be the sum of two dice. Now here's just a little bit of notation. If I wrote something like x equals 3, this means that I want the sum of two dice is 3. If I said x equals 6, that would be the sum of the dice. Is 6. And because we're thinking of x as a function, you can also write it like function notation. So you could say that x like a function, you'll have some input, and so you can pass in a sample point. We could say, uh, let's say, 6, 1. So there's our sample point, and it's going to then, for this one, map to 7. And we can do the same thing with, say, x, and we'll say, let's do 2, 5. So 2, 5 would then map to 7. Any questions so far in the chat? Okay. So basically what we've described is a function that's mapping from the sample space to some numbers. So could you express all the x equals 7 as a set? Yes. So, but you have to be careful then. I would say that, let's say, um, here's, we'll say example C, and then we'll say X equals, um, let's say seven. So we could do that, something like this. What are all the possible s? So in the chat, what is that? What is that set? From the bottom left to the top right. Diagonal, okay, yeah. Yeah, I think somebody had, 
I think someone else also explicitly typed it out, so that's good. So yeah. The question is asking, so we're asking what 7 is. So if I wanted to do that, let's maybe I'll pick a different color. Oh, I've used, have I used green yet? Uh, let's use brown. So what I want here are all the possible outcomes. Here's sevens. And so what I need to do is now look back to what those would be. So as Eric has pointed out, be all these numbers along here. Of course, you keep filling these in. I don't. So we would uh, write those in. So we would have one six two five three four. Four, three, five, two, and six, one. Good. So that would be all the possible S's. So some people could write S equals. Uh, I would also say maybe S is an element of like that if I wanted to be a little bit more specific, but that's just the way that we would write it. Looks good. So, you know, a question probably everyone is thinking is why are, why are you doing this? To me, to us, and it's more because we're interested in the probability associated with each value by the random variable. So, because we are interested in the probability. associated with each value by the random variable. So what I mean by this is, going back up to here, we'll let x be sum of two dice. We're still working within this example. So what we're interested in is, first of all, we'll say I'm going to use little x. So again, I'm going to say little x. And the values that this random variable x can take is from 2 to 12. So I'll write out 2, 3, 4. All the way up to 12. Now what we're interested in is not the random variable itself, but the probability. So what this is saying then is, what is the probability? So in this case, uh, 
let's say over here, this would be the probability of x equals 2. So again, then I'll express this in words. It's the probability that the sum of two dice is 2. So looking up here, what is the probability that the sum of two dice is 2? What do you think in the chat? Yes, it's 136. There's only one outcome where it's 2. Or sorry, I should say there's only one instance of where it's 2. So yes, 1 in 36, right? Because there's 36. So then similarly, what do you think that the probability for x equals 3? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make it easy. I'll say that there's only two instances here, so it's 1 and 2 here. So I'll say that's 2 out of 36. There's four instances where there's 4, so I'll say that there's, sorry, there's three instances where there's 4. Four instances where there's 5. Or sorry, <laughs> there's 1, 2, 3, 4 instances of 5. There's five instances of six. There's six instances of seven. And then it decreases as we go back down to eight, nine, 10, 11, and lastly, 12. So this is why we're usually interested, is that we may have some experimental, um, in the experiment, we have sample, sample points or the outcomes of the experiment, but that's not necessarily what we're explicitly interested in. We're not explicitly interested in that the two dice landed three and two. We're actually interested in the fact that the sum was five. And moreover, we may be interested in what the probabilities were for each of those values for that random variable. So here's another example. This was uh, data, now this one's not in the textbook. This is the data of flying bombs. Bomb hits in the south of London in World War II. What they had done was they took an area, so you can think of that as your sample space. They took an area in the south of London, and what they did was they took, well, there was a whole bunch of bomb hits.
In fact, there was 537 bomb hits in this, this area. What they had done is then they took a grid and they overlaid it. So they just started to draw a grid in. And this isn't the actual <laughs> data, of course, right? I'm just drawing this in as just for illustration. So they overlaid a grid. I'm going to say illustrative purpose. And they split this grid into 576 grid cells that had a length or width of a quarter kilometer a quarter square kilometer. So what they did was they said let x be the number of bomb strikes in a grid square or a grid cell. So again, they're not so interested in each individual outcome. They kind of want to know kind of a distribution of it. So what they did was they, they said little x, then they had big x. And what they then said is they kind of made a little table And going through each square, they did, oh, of course. So what they found was there was squares with zero strikes. One, two, three, four, and all the way up. And they just said greater than or equal to five. And what they said was they found zero, so there was zero grid cells. What they found was there was 229 that had none. They found that there was 211 with one strike in it. There was two squares. Sorry. Uh, uh, there was 93 squares that had two strikes. 35, 7, and 1. So again, you can see that there's kind of a distribution that uh, the bomb strikes, uh, in, as the number of bomb strikes in a cell increase, the number of them, uh, the occurrences decrease. And so what we can do is we can take 229 and divide that by 576 and so you would get 0.398 so over here what we've just done is we took the 229 and divided it by 576 and so th what th we're actually calculating is what some people will call the empirical probability so this is something that is actually experienced in the real world or sometimes, again, like we've been using in the textbook, they'll call it the relative frequency. So it's 0.39, uh, 0.398. And again, dividing it by this number by three, uh, 576, we get 366.161. Zero six one zero one two and point zero zero two. And of course, this is real data. 
This isn't data that wasn't made uh, made up for the purposes of this example or something contrived. So what I'm going to call uh, this up here is up here. This is an example. This probability, all these probabilities, the how we've distributed it. That's what we call it. of a probability distribution. Now we'll talk a little bit more about that tomorrow. And again, this whole thing is a probability distribution. So number four, you can have a random variable is called, they give it a special name. It's named after mathematician Bernoulli from the same family, of course, that came up with the idea of the Bernoulli principle, right, in aircraft. Air f we have random variable. Now they say it's a Bernoulli random variable if its possible outcomes or the possible values are either zero or one. Again, not both. So you can think of this as a failure, or you could have this as a success. So we need some examples. We could say um, flipping a coin. When we do that, our sample space is heads or tails. So uh, what we could do is let X be a coin flip. It's heads. So you could say x here, so it's 1 or 0. So that's if s is heads, if s is tails, So let S be, now in this case, let's say that uh, it's going to be all the possible people that you may date. So you could say, here's A, here's B, here's C, D. It's a long list. There's a lot of possible candidates. So you can say, let X be the person says yes to a date. So again, similarly, so you could have like let s if s says yes and zero or a failure if they say no.
let's use s as uh, some numbers we could do one two three four dot 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 we could let x be a prime number and a prime number is a number that is divisible by itself or one So again, passing that in, it's a prime number. So if, if s is prime, zero if it's not. So you could think of like x of three, that's a prime number, x of five, that's a prime number. But say x10, which can be decomposed into 5 times 2. Those are both prime numbers. So then, uh, no, that's not a prime number. We could let has to be, say, an engine in an aircraft. We'll go up to 10. So we could say let x be the engine passes inspection. so on and so forth. So you can think of Bernoulli as a random variable that assigns possible values, thinking of it as binary 0, 1, a success or a failure. And that pops up so often that's why we give it a name. Discrete random variables do not necessarily have to assign to a finite set of numbers. They can also be assigning to a countably infinite set. So what I mean then is, is um, consider, of course, here's an example. Consider this experiment. Uh, in which we have resistors. Are tested. And well, let's say like they're usually an ohm meter or something like that. And they keep are tested until a defective one is found. So what we'll say is we'll let uh, A be acceptable. We'll let D be defective. So then our sample space would look like, OK, again, we have to be sure that, again, we're thinking about the experiment. We're contesting until a defective one is found. So you would find either you would stop when you find one. So you would. Stop if you found a defective one on the first one. You would have an acceptable, then a defective, and then you'll stop. Acceptable, acceptable, and then defective. Acceptable, 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 then defective. And you can keep going on to infinity. We don't have enough time for that. That's why we put the three dots, so on and so forth. So we'll let x be the number. of resistors test it before the experiment terminates so then you would have x of d so like this first 
outcome. That would be just 1. x of ad would be 2. If I pick this one, a, 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 d, that's 4, and so on and so forth. So, any positive integer of x So the set of possible values is countably infinite. And that's just the end of this example. So again, it's not necessarily random variables can assign to a finite set and I should say discrete so discrete random variables can assign to a finite set or to accountably infinite. Sorry, I'm not clear why. Oh. So in this case, it says, let x be the number of resistors tested before the experiment terminates. So all you have to do then is count how many resistors were tested then. So in this case, there was only one resistor. It was defective, and then the experiment terminated. There was two resistors. So on the second one, a defective one was found, so it terminated. So there's two. So we're just looking at the number of resistors that were tested. So there was one here, there was two here, and then there was four in this case. No, it's not just their placement in the series. Uh, it, it, the experiments does end when its def uh, defective one is found, but um, we're just simply counting the number of resistors that was tested then. Okay. So lastly, we have... Just kind of a summary. Here's a random variable. They can be discrete, or they can be continuous. And the possible values are a finite set. Or we can have numbers from the natural numbers, the whole numbers, the integers, or the rationals. And in the continuous, you can have possible values are the reals, are all the reals. So the reals are again uh, the union of the the rationals with the irrationals. Or some interval or some disjoint union of intervals. And interestingly enough, that the probability of x for some particular value, let's say little x, is equal to 0 for all x. And 
and we'll have to pick that up for tomorrow, or on Thursday, actually. So thank you very much for participating in today's lecture. I hope to uh, answer any questions that you may have after this lecture by sending me an email, or we can set up office hours after that. There's no further questions in the chat. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in, and enjoy the rest of the day.